Good morning, everyone. Hopefully everybody's doing well today and we can see what we got going on for the Python lab. So what we're going to do in this lab, I kind of introduced it, or introduced it a little bit when I was um, talking about it in the first week. We're going to play with these little devices called the Adafruit Python Express. And you can see here in this lab section on your Canvas shell um, that we're going to play with these little devices here. And it looks like a little complicated circuit board, but there's lots of cool little sensors on there. There's lots of cool features that we're going to be able to play with throughout this, this summer. So if you need to learn a little bit more about this Adafruit CircuitPython Express, you can certainly click on this link here. We'll actually be referencing some of the material on here. But if we look at this device, there's a couple of features that we want to talk about right away. And Miriam and her team will be working with you to get these devices out to you. At the top here, we have the USB port. And this is what we're going to be using with the cord to connect to our computer. Don't connect those just yet. We need to go through some steps in order to get that up and ready to go. At the bottom, we have the power port. This will work with the little pa uh, battery power pack that you have. Don't connect that just yet. We'll use that here later in a few weeks, but make sure you don't connect that just yet as we're simply going to be working with the coding side up here at the top. Other things you'll see across this device, you have all these little pads that go all the way around. And this is how we interface with this little black chip up here at the top. This is considered a microprocessor. This microprocessor can take inputs and outputs. And inputs and outputs refer to things that we're going to do. So sometimes you put an input into this system. For example, you push one of these buttons. When you push that button, it sends an input signal to the microprocessor. And then when you release that button, it also sends an input saying that you released that button. Now, that button may do something to one of these outputs, depending on what we're going with. So, for example, one of the outputs may be one of these LEDs on the system. And on this system, there's quite a few LEDs. You're going to see some red LED over here, a green LED over here. Um, actually, I'm upside down here. So this will be your red one. This will be your green one. And then each one of these square dots that you see all the way across are going to be what we call NeoPixels. These are LEDs, but they're extremely fancy LEDs because we can do multiple color lights. We can do brightness difficult uh, adjustments. We can do all sorts of cool things. And you guys will get to play with those here today. We have the two buttons out in the middle and one in the, or, and then one in the center, the small one here. We'll need to use this here today. And then there's a couple other senses around the way. As we're playing with these boards and we interact with things like lights, et cetera, it's extremely important you don't touch this board with any metal, all right? It could short the device, it'll damage that microprocessor or the sensors, and we don't have a device for you at that point, all right? So we use extreme caution when you're playing with this. You can touch it with your fingers, but it's best if you try not to touch this board as much as possible. Um, it can be susceptible to any static electricity. We could burn up the board. We could even possibly burn the USB port in the laptop. So we really kind of want to be careful as we're playing with these things. All right. Um, Merriman and team is going to walk you through a bunch of things today and move you through. I just want to give you a highlight of these different sections in this video so we can explain some things to pay attention for. So the first thing when you unbox this device, again, we don't need the battery pack. So don't worry about putting that together just yet. But you will need your black cable and you will need the device itself. And once we get that in, you're going to need to go ahead and plug that into your computer. If all goes well, you should see a little green light at the bottom and you may see a bunch of lights flashing in circles all the way around. Once you have that in, it's running the code currently that was burned to it when it was manufactured. What we need to do is reset that and make it available for Python. So in the middle, if you push this reset button, this tiny one here in the middle, you should hear Windows chime and you should hear a normal device disconnect like you unplug the USB drive, don't unplug it. It should sound like that. And the lights on it will all go green and then you'll see a red in the lower left hand corner and it will fade in and out when it first comes up. This indicates that you're in USB mode. So from there, we need to open up File Explorer in Windows. And once you open up File Explorer, you're going to see a C play boot drive available. Now this boot drive may have a different drive letter. For example, on my system, it's the letter J, but it may be something different on your system. So you'll need to pay attention to that. So inside file Explorer, you'll see that. And you'll notice these little devices only have about four megabytes of storage, not very much storage at all. 
but our strips are very small. And so they don't require a ton of storage. Um, what will chew up a little bit of space is some of the libraries that we need to use. And we'll talk about that in the next section. So when you open up this drive, you're going to see three files inside. You'll see this current UF2, index.htm, and the info file going down here. We need to update this bootloader to be used for CircuitPython. All right. So what we want to do is we'll click on this link here, and this link will download a new UF2 file called Adafruit Circuit Python Circuit Playground Express, big long file name. You'll download this file, and then you're going to drag and drop it back into this drive that you see here. So we're going to add it to this folder. The moment you release, you're going to hear Windows disconnect. Don't unplug the device. And then you're going to notice all the lights go out, and then there'll be a green flashing light down in the lower right-hand corner. If you open up your Playboot drive, now notice that Playboot drive may no longer be Playboot. It may be called CircuitPy, right? It got renamed. And inside that, you're going to see this list of files. And so inside of here, this is a uh, device that's been set up for CircuitPython. The folders that we're going to care about the most is this library folder, this lib folder here. We're going to work with that next. And then the other thing you will need to know is this code.py file down here at the bottom. Now, you'll notice when we were working with Trinket, it was always called main.py. In this case, we are going to use code.py. So every file that we want to run on this device needs to be called code.py. That's the main file. Now, we may have additional files that may run on the system, but the main one is always called code.py. So if we were to look inside this file, we would see some uh, example script code that would come from the factory. In order to edit that file, though, we need to install an editor. We can't use Trinket in this case because we're interacting with this device specifically attached to your computer. Trinket is what's called an online editor, and that allows us to execute that code on the Internet, and we don't have to have Python installed on our machines. Right now, we need to have some kind of editor to work with these. There's lots of editors available on the system. What we need to do is... Um, install one that we want to use. But before we can get to that, we need to install additional libraries. So inside these additional libraries, Adafruit themselves has come up with some things to make it a little easier to interact with this board. Otherwise, you'd have to memorize a whole bunch of different variable names and a bunch of other things, um, different packages, et cetera. They've made it very simple for you to interact with that. So to add these additional libraries, we need to go click on this link here and we'll download this zip file. And when we extract that file, we will see something like this on the screen. You'll have this examples folder, which will have a bunch of example scripts we can play with. Don't do that just yet. We need to work with these a little bit later as we add some extra features to our devices. Right now, we have the lib folder. This lib is going to contain a bunch of extra libraries for all the different sensors on this device. It can tell temperature. It can tell light sensitivity. It can tell all sorts of things. We will use those as we go through the summer here. And then finally, the requirements folder, that just holds some important text files for when this system was built. You can ignore that folder. You can ignore the readme and you can ignore the version. So again, the one we really care about is this lib folder, all right? If you open up that lib folder, there's a, a bunch of different files inside of there, and we need to copy a few of those over to our CircuitPy drive, okay? Remember, on my system, this is drive J, for example. But we don't want to copy and or we don't want to drag and drop those files. We want to actually copy and paste those files. So as we copy and paste those files, the reason for that is we want to leave the original files that we downloaded intact. In case something goes wrong with our system, we can reload them back to the device. If you drag and drop, sometimes it moves those files. We don't want to do that. So the folders that we want to copy are Adafruit Circuit Python uh, or um, Adafruit Circuit Playground, then copy that entirely over to the lib folder. Then we want to grab neopixel.mpy and we want to grab simpleio.mpy. Now notice these end in mpy, which is different than the .py files that we've talked about before. That's because these have been compressed down for machine code. So if you try to look at them, they're a little hard to read. It's because all the extra space has been taken out of them. Once you get all those files copied over, again, on my system, it was called CircuitPy, and it was the J drive. And inside that lib folder, we want to make sure we have these three um, things in here. So we have the first folder, and there should be a couple files inside that folder. Copy the whole folder, and then we should have NeoPixel and Simple.io. All right. Now we have all those added. Now we can go ahead and add our editor. 
So if we come down here to our Python editor, what we need to do is install one called Mew. Now, Mew is a Python editor that allows us to work directly with these individual devices. All right. So there's a serial port. There's some debugging. There's things set up for us to figure out what's going on on that device. When we install Python directly on the computer, it typically comes with an editor called Idle. And that's mostly what I train most of my students in is Idle. However, for this assignment, we want to, or for this lab, we want to install Mew. All right. We cannot use the Trinket IO, as I mentioned before. So we'll download the Mew editor and we'll get it installed. And you'll just go through the software, use the default prompts, et cetera. It should open Mew and it might take a little bit to open that first time. So be patient. If it doesn't open, go ahead and just go to your start menu on your computer and you can go ahead and launch it from there. When Mew first launches, we want to make sure we click on Circuit Python up here at the top, and then we'll click OK. What that does is that goes out and looks for this device on your computer so we can find out whether or not we can interact with it and code with it. So we'll hit OK. All right. Mew has the option to read the serial port. So with these little microprocessors, they have what's called a serial port. And that serial port allows us to interact with that machine. You can think of it a lot like the output of Trinket.io where we had inputs and we could type in things. That is what the serial console will allow us to do. So we'll click on that serial button at the top. And down at the bottom, you will have what's called a REPL screen down here. Now, with CircuitPython, you'll notice you can enter in, you know, Python commands directly to the device so you can test things, or it will just execute the code. What's nice about Mew is every time you write something, it will automatically save it and write it to the device right away. We don't have to program this device. Sometimes with microprocessors, like I've got a whole stack back here behind me, we actually have to program those devices. It's a lengthy program process. These devices are slick because they show up as a USB drive on the computer. We drag and drop files to it. It immediately programs it. It's really, really slick. So down here at the bottom, you will see a REPL down here. If you press control D, that will always reload the program. And that way it will allow you to interact with it. So if you get a bunch of silly characters or something like that down here at the bottom, for example, if I show you this Mew screen that I have up right now, notice how there's some garbled text down here at the bottom. If you're seeing that, just press Control D a couple times and that will reset the device and then you should get a nice clean interaction down at the bottom. Now, right now, there's nothing printed out to the screen. Remember the print function? There's nothing printing out here, so you won't see anything. You'll just see Auto Reload is on. And if you see this, press Enter here to get REPL you'll end up with a command prompt that you can type things to. We don't want to do that. If you ever accidentally press enter and go there, you simply hit control D, it will restart it, and you can go on from there, all right? When you see it, what we want to do is look at your code, and you should see something like this hello world pop up down here at the bottom. Right now, the code that's on this code.py that was in there, right, you're going to see hello world, and that's just what's printed out to the serial console. You'll also notice that the LED is flashing in the lower right-hand side, okay? So as we're editing things on the fly and we're going to start playing with this thing, it's going to save things automatically and immediately execute that code. We don't have to go to play or run like we do on Trinket. The, the software immediately starts running it. So we'll hit next. And so this is where you guys really get to play today, okay? There's going to be a lot of this where I want you to go edit some scripts and go have some fun and learn this kind of thing. Merriam and her team will be able to kind of help walk you through. If you have some typos and things, we'll try to get that fixed. Inside these scripts, the way this would work is you're going to see this section here that always is in gray when I give you example scripts. Okay. What you need to do is copy and paste this section of it. Hit control C. And then you're going to go into your Mew editor, like what you see here, right? So I have a Mew editor. I'm going to hit Control A and Control V. I'm going to overwrite whatever's in that screen. We don't want anything in there, okay? Now, if we look at this example script, we usually have a little explanation what's up here. And I try to have lots of comments to explain what these different commands are doing. So these are requiring different packages. When we interact with this board, we have to have the extra libraries that we talked about before. So the import command allows us to import those libraries into this device so we can interact with them. In this case, we're going to interact with the board package, the digital I.O., and the time. Okay. So digital I.O., what that package does is these, has, uh, these devices have a bunch of digital inputs and outputs. We want to interact with those. 
So we are going to define the LED, and there's a variable called board.led that is talking about the red LED on this particular device. We want to set that up as a variable called LED. You guys have worked with variables so far. And we need to put this command in here that tells it we want the lower left red one, okay? This LED direction says that we want this to be an output. What we are doing is defining this particular LED. It's an output, right? We put out light. So we want to set it to an output. From there, we start the main program. Now we'll get into while loops and what they are for now. Just leave that code alone. What this is going to do is it's going to print out to the user how many times would you like to flash the LED. We're going to get a count in from the user. And then we're going to use a for loop, which again, we'll talk about here next week. The for loop is allowing us to go in a range. And what that does is, is if I type the number five into our count, then we're going to go from one to five, which means we're just going to cycle through this five times. And the first time we go through this loop, we're going to turn the LED on. That's what this true does. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit more about what true is here next week. That's a Boolean variable. All right, so um, we're going to set that to true to turn it on. Then we're going to sleep for half a second. Then we're going to turn that value off. And then we're going to sleep for half a second. And then we're going to start the whole loop back over again. Okay, so the first cycle, we turn it on. Then we turn it off. The second cycle, we turn it on, turn it off, et cetera, depending on how many count that we did up here at the top. At the end of after doing all of its flashes, it's going to print out to the user how many times they entered. So to test this, if we click down here at the bottom and we hit control D, you'll notice that it'll do a little thing down here. It's going to run some code or this guy out of the way. Let's try this again. Control D. And now we see that it says, how many times do you want to flash the LED? Again, sometimes you're going to get a little bit of garbled stuff here. If you hit control D again, it should clean it up and then you can see it. There we go. And now we can see how many times you want to flash the LED. So if I press five and press enter and we look at the device on my screen, notice that that red light is flashing five times. Once we get past five times, it will tell you down here, you turned on the light five times. So then you can put in 20 and hit enter. And if we look at the device, it will flash 20 times. And then it will go ahead and turn back off. Waiting. There it goes. And then it turns off. And at the end of that down here, it'll tell us that we turned it off 20 times. Now, you guys should have a little bit of fun with this. So you notice right now I'm waiting for half a second. If we adjust this to a smaller number, say 0 0.05 on this side of things, and then I go ahead and hit control D down here to reload the program, right? I hit control D. And now if I say it 20 times, and I press enter, look at my camera, and you'll notice that light flashes a little bit faster as it goes through there, okay? We want to save that time as it goes through there. So we save that. It goes through. There we go. We do 20 times and hit enter. And notice that light flashes really, really fast, and then it goes off there, okay? If we wanted that to go slower, then we would increase this time to, say, maybe one second. So there's a few things that you can play with here. Now, remember, when you're playing with this particular script, as it says down here, we haven't learned any error coding yet, meaning that if the user types in a word instead of a number, so for example, if we look down here on the screen and I type in something like cat and hit enter, you're going to notice that on the device, it's going to flash red a couple times. And if you wait a little bit longer, it's going to flash red like this. If it's doing this, it's telling you that it can't execute the code. There's some error that happened. All you have to do is look back at your screen down here and hit control D. That will reset the device. And now you can go ahead and type in a normal number like five, press enter, and it should start flashing again. Okay. Now that's a lot of fun. There's a little red LED and we can play with that LED, but let's face it. There's 10 of these bright NeoPixels on this thing. That's a whole lot more fun to play with and they're multicolored. So let's play a little bit with these. If we look at those NeoPixels on the device, we're going to see anything from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, meaning there's 10 NeoPixels on the device, but these are the numbers, and the numbers start at 0. So when we work with this script, if you want to deal with this NeoPixel, it's 0. 
if you want to deal with this one, it's one working counterclockwise all the way around. Okay. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this script into your device. And we'll copy in here, hit control V and hit V to copy and paste everything in. So what this is going to do, similar to the last one where we had an LED on the device. Um, also, if you hit control S, it will go ahead and save that system, right? And so when we hit control S, if everything went right, you should have that really bright red LED down there in the corner. All right, let's look a little bit at this code. The first one here, this is setting up pixels as opposed to that LED variable we had last time. And if we look at these different um, arguments that need to be passed in, we want to work with all 10 of our pixels. And we want to set the brightness at 0.2. We'll come back to this brightness as you guys will get to play with that a little bit. Down here, we're defining different variables. For example, red. And these red are going to be defined as a tuple. And we'll talk about tuples here next week. But for now, just know that this is corresponding to RGB colors. So RGB colors is red, green, blue. And those numbers vary from 0 to 255 for each one of those individual colors. And that's how we get multiple colors that are available out to our eyes, okay? Just like your monitor is using RGB colors in order to say that this is black on my screen or this is yellow on my screen. That pixel is turning on, each one of those pixels on that monitor has three different LEDs, one red, one green, one blue, and they're shining at different intensities to give you an actual color out to your eye, okay? So as those are working, we need to adjust those colors. So if we just go full brightness, and this range is anywhere from 0 to 255, at 255, that's full brightness for that particular color, okay? If we put zeros, then that means those LEDs are off. They're not shining. So in this case, we're working with the red LED on this little NeoPixel, and we're going to have that at full brightness. And then we can define these other colors. So notice yellow is full red and about half of green right? Little, little under half as it goes through there. Now to play with these colors, and we'll work with that in a little bit, we'll define those out. Notice that off is all zeros going across there, okay? Now we can look at the main code, and in this pixels, you'll see this pixels and then an eight number here. Eight corresponds to eight on this device. Remember, if we go back and look at our deal, this is the eight pixel. So you guys can adjust this particular pixel to show which one you want to light up, then we can see pixels.show, that actually turns it on. Notice here we set it to our variable of red. And when I highlight that, you'll notice it goes back to this variable up here, All right? So if we were to change this to say cyan and hit control S, save, you'll notice that it turned the light to a blue. And it's not just blue, it's actually a cyan. If we wanted full blue, we would go to blue and hit control save, or just control S, and notice that blue is different than cyan. We can get different colors on these devices. So what this is going to do is show it, and it's going to sleep, and then we can set that pixel to off. So we need to make sure that this pixel is 8, and then this pixel is also 8. So let's save that, hit control S, and it will turn on for five second, or half a second, and then off for half a second. And you should get this nice little flashing light down here at the bottom. Okay. If we want to adjust those colors, we simply uh, change this blue, or we can change this to a different number. Say we do five and we set this one to five and then hit control S to save it. And we notice the number five spot goes to blue. What you guys should be able to play with is again, the time variables. You can adjust these colors only to the colors that are defined up here. Now say you want to define a new color and we're going to call it my color, right? we need to take these three numbers and adjust them to whatever we want. So go ahead and play with those numbers, see what you get. If you want an exact color, you can take this URL out of this code. We'll hit control C, go into your web browser and hit control V. And you guys can play and get these different colors. So if I click on blue or these, if I highlight over one of these, notice that down here, I have my red value, my green value and my blue value. So if I wanted this light pink, I need to have 255, 204, and 229. I could come in here and adjust these numbers accordingly. So if I come in here and do 255, 
204 and 229. And then I save this. You will notice that on my device, oops, go back here, we need to then change this blue to my color and hit Control S. And if we look at this device, it's it's going to show up as a little bright on my screen here because these NeoPixels are bright, but we would get a little off pinkish color. Now, it's not always 100% accurate because you're having to play with those numbers and see what's going on. Also, I mentioned earlier on brightness as we did up here, right? 0.2 means that we're using 20% of this brightness. Notice how bright this is, and it's only at 20%. So we can use a value here ranging from 0 to 1 in 0.1 increments. So if I set this equal to 1, and then I hit Control S, this is going to get super bright as it comes through here. And you don't want to look at that because it'll actually hurt your eyes. So we typically want to play within the 20% range, but if we're doing some projects later, you may want to actually increase that brightness. All right, have fun, play with these different numbers, see what color of lights you can come up, see how fast you can flash the lights. You may even get a chance to say, copy this code, and maybe we do more than one pixel. So if we say something like pixels three equals red, right? And I copy pixels three. And then this one down here is pixels three equals off. Now, if I save this and I look at my device, I now have two lights flashing as they go through there. So play with a little bit with this script, get familiar with it. It'll get us the basics to get started. And then we're going to have a lot of fun next week in order to do a lot of other cool, fancy things with this device. Have a good weekend.